right, so we're moving on to the, um, the last of the three theorems that have value in the name, right? The intermediate value theorem, extreme value theorem, now mean value theorem. Um, the first of those two are actually quite difficult theorems, um, right? They're, they're very useful. Proving them is quite challenging and not something that you probably see uh, until you're in an upper level analysis or topology course. It's not something you usually do in your intro calculus. Uh, the mean value theorem, on the other hand, uh, we'll see it's not actually that hard to establish. Um, and despite being not so hard to establish, it's also very, very useful. We're going to find a lot of uses for the mean value theorem. It's going to be essential for the work that follows um, on things like understanding increasing, decreasing functions, curvature, things like that. Mean value theorem is going to be essential. Okay. Now, the basic idea of the mean value theorem is, is pretty simple, right? So far, we've been, we've been concerned with extreme values, right? What is the absolute minimum? What's the absolute maximum? Um, now we're interested more in, in average values, right? So when we say mean here, we mean, we mean in the sense of average, right? OK, so what is the, what is the average value? Well. We can't quite give the average value of the function, at least not yet. Um, that's something that we'll be able to do once we get to integration. Um, but we can talk about the average change, right? The average change in our function over the interval, well, that's simply rise over run, delta y over delta x, right? So f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Okay, and so what the mean value theorem does is the mean value theorem relates the average change, which tells us about, you know, it has to do with values of the function at particular points. Um, it relates this average change to the instantaneous change. We know that the instantaneous change is given in terms of the derivative, right? Um, and so far, we've kind of been, you know, you start with a function, and then you can plug the function into the definition of the derivative or the derivative rules, and you, and you get the derivative, right? So knowing the function tells us what the derivative should be. Um, the mean value theorem actually lets us turn things around in certain cases, and knowing about the derivative will tell us certain things about the function, right? That's going to be really useful. Okay, so what exactly does the mean value theorem say? Well, what the mean value theorem says is that under some reasonable conditions, the average change in your function is going to be equal to the instantan instantaneous rate of change, right? Um, the, the analogy that's usually given here is you go, you get in your car, you drive from point A to point B. So let's say the trip is 50 kilometers and it takes you half an hour, right? Um, then you can say, all right, so, so I traveled 50 kilometers in half an hour. Uh, what was my average speed? Well, if you did 50 kilometers in half an hour, you would have done 100 kilometers in one hour. So your average speed must have been 100 kilometers per hour. Um, what the mean value theorem is saying is that if you average 100 kilometers per hour over your trip, there must have been some time during the trip when you were going exactly 100 kilometers an hour, right? So there will be some times where you're going slower than that, sometimes where you're going faster, right? Um, but your speed is, you know, not going to just suddenly jump from, you know, 50 kilometers an hour to 150 kilometers an hour, right? That uh, would have serious consequences for both you and your vehicle, um, right? So we, we assume that, you know, change, change happens gradually. Um, and that means that if you're changing from a, from a small, smaller rate of change to a larger rate of change, somewhere in between you're going to hit that average rate of change. Right? That's what the mean value theorem is saying. Um, so the statement of the theorem is as follows. It says, suppose that we have a function f and it's continuous on a closed interval from A to B, and it's differentiable 
on the corresponding open interval from A to B. Okay? Under these conditions, which are, are typical conditions for the types of functions we usually deal with, then we are guaranteed the existence of some number C between A and B such that this average rate of change f of b minus f of a over b minus a is equal to the instantaneous rate of change at that point, right? So there has to be at least one point between a and b where f prime of c, instantaneous rate of change, is equal to the average rate of change, right? So we might have somewhere like, say, here where we draw the tangent line at that point, and it's parallel to the line segment that goes between A f of A and B f of B, right? In this case, there's actually um, two such points where the tangent line will be parallel, right? Mean value theorem guarantees that those points exist. Um, much like the intermediate value theorem, it doesn't tell you where to find them. It only guarantees the existence of, the, of at least one such point, right? Um, Finding the points is going to take other techniques. But the nice thing about the mean value theorem is, is that for many of the applications, you don't necessarily need to be able to find that point. You just need to know it's there uh, to be able to make conclusions about your function. Okay? Uh, so we're going we're to look at some of the consequences of the mean value theorem uh, in the videos that follow.